I believe everyone here has the desire and capacity to change the world for the better. Innovation is one way to create positive impact in our community and beyond. I've had the privilege to study innovation through a number of different lenses and have identified some keys to successful innovation. I'll share my insights with you today and I'll begin by laying some groundwork and defining innovation. Innovation as a word is used so much that it's nearly lost its meaning. But if you try to think of a good definition, it can be surprisingly challenging. A recently published paper titled The Dynamics on Expanding Spaces proposes a definition I really like. They begin by introducing the idea of a novelty and then they relate it to an innovation with the following description. A novelty is something that's new only for us or a few other people, whereas an innovation is something that's brand new and changes a paradigm or the habits of an entire population. The paper goes on to just explore how we can mathematically model novelties and innovations. And with that, they introduce the idea of the adjacent possible and its role in forming something new. The adjacent possible is that undiscovered area that's right next to or only once removed from what already exists. The adjacent possible, just around the bend, is the fertile ground in which innovation takes root. Let's take a look at the four keys I found that can help us access it. The first key is the identification and understanding of an unmet need. I believe this is a fundamental piece of innovation that is commonly missed. When you think of new advancements, usually you think of creative solutions. And while solutions are a critical piece of the puzzle, oftentimes people develop these solutions before they really understand what problem they're solving. I refer to these as solutions looking for a need. And they usually fall short in their potential to be truly innovative. These are usually the nice-to-haves or the novelties. However, if a solution solves a fundamental problem for a group of people, it will profoundly affect their lives. I consider this an innovation. In 2012, I spent a year in the west of Ireland completing a BioInnovate fellowship. A primary component of this fellowship centered around clinical observations and the identification of the right unmet need that could be solved with a commercially viable medical device. Our team, made up of a medical doctor, a market access specialist, and a fellow engineer, spent months shadowing surgeons, speaking to patients, and talking to pretty much anyone who would engage with us about what issues needed to be resolved in order to improve patient care. While this was my most intimate experience with unmet needs, they've continued to crop up through virtually all of my learnings and innovation since then. In 2011, when I was in South Africa in a rural clinic, I saw a room filled with incubators and other hand-me-down medical equipment, and they were just sitting there idle collecting dust. Various institutions and organizations had brought the technology to help sick infants. But unfortunately, the complexities and maintenance requirements often rendered these machines useless in this setting. Rather, a much better, cheaper solution had been adopted, called kangaroo mother care. If a mother keeps an infant close to her chest with skin-to-skin -skin contact, the baby's heart rate and temperature are naturally regulated. Kangaroo mother care proved to be a much more sustainable solution that was well-suited to the rural areas of sub-Saharan Africa. So if you don't have a strong understanding of the problem you're solving, you may end up solving the wrong problem or developing something that is not useful to that population. And for that reason, the unmet need should always serve as your North Star in the innovation process. The second key I refer to as cross-pollination. Cross-pollination is the exchange of ideas across disciplines, specialties, and geographies. If you take a group of diverse people and you present them with an unmet need and ask them to generate solutions, you can begin to see the magic of innovation sparking. This environment creates unlikely collisions of ideas and is a great model for cross-pollination. When I was finished in Ireland, I landed in Silicon Valley at Singularity University. 
For those who are unfamiliar, Singularity University is an educational institution that hosts a summer program where they challenge participants to leverage technology and develop solutions that positively impact a billion people in the next 10 years. Lofty goal. <laughs> anyway, so myself and 79 others from 30 different countries united to learn about cutting edge technologies and then to work across language barriers to take on global grand challenges like poverty, health, and security. Singularity University led to some of the most interesting conversations I've ever had. But not only does it spawn interesting conversations, it also leads to creative solutions to unmet needs. Multiple companies have grown out of Singularity, with international teams taking intriguing approaches to solve big problems, like using 3D printing in space to facilitate maintenance on the International Space Station or another international team that's developing technology that looks at microRNA for early cancer diagnostics. <laughs> Singularity University provided a host of opportunities for cross-pollination, but we have to remember those opportunities are everywhere around us. What, take TEDx Bozeman, for example. What ideas might be shared between us today? The third key is an understanding of the trajectory of technological advancement. This key is instrumental for any innovation involving technology. Moore's law states that the number of transistors per square inch on an integrated circuit doubles every two years since their invention. That means we're advancing at an exponential rather than linear rate. In practice, that can be seen in the fact that the amount of computing power in your cell phone is comparable to what existed in the supercomputers of the 80s. So when you're coming up with your next technological advancements, it's critical that you think of what is happening with this trajectory and find just the right inflection point. If you think of it like surfing, where the timing in which you stand on the wave is crucial to your success, or if you paddle too slow or too fast or stand up too early or too late, you won't catch the wave. But the tricky part here is we're on an exponential time scale. So things are advancing so fast that you can easily miss the wave and be leapfrogged by a new, better technology before you're even done with development. It's imperative to innovation, then, that you understand the market and technology trends as well as this trajectory of technology to ensure that the solutions you develop are relevant, useful, and accepted. So you've made it to the last key. And unfortunately, a lot of times, this is where innovation goes to the graveyard. At this point, if you've adopted all my earlier keys, you have a brilliant idea generated to solve an unmet need, paired with a group of great diverse minds and an understanding of the technology that could be leveraged. But that idea does not make an impact or become an innovation until it has been implemented. Sure, there's plenty of reasons not to follow through on an idea. Maybe it's a fear of failure, a lack of resources, or a number of other self-imposed hurdles. But those can all be overcome. It is the responsibility of the innovator to bring that idea into practice. And that's why action is the last key. So you've heard the four keys. And really, all that's left to unlocking innovation is for you to ask yourself, what is it that inspires me to impact? Now go act on that inspiration and elevate the world around you. Thank you. <laughs>